Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will talk a little bit about testing in Android. Specifically, about how many tests you should actually write for your Android app, because in every corner you will hear, write tests, testing is so important, it's the most important thing on this planet. And yeah, I agree partly with that, but it still makes sense to think about how many tests you should actually write, how much time you should spend for testing, because everybody who wrote tests at least once or twice knows how much work it can actually be and how much time it can cost you to write test cases and especially to maintain these. So when it comes to testing, you often hear this term of test coverage. Test coverage is basically a metric that we use to measure how well tested an application is. So when taking a look at test coverage, you can, you can, by the way, just uh, generate a report for that in Android Studio. You can just uh, right click on the, on the test package and then there will be a run, run by coverage or something like that. And that will basically give you a report of, of the percentage of your code that is covered by your test cases. So there's usually um, either test coverage by lines. So it will tell you how, how many of your lines in, in, as a percentage value is actually covered by your test cases or as a form of a uh, code path. So how, how many code paths are uh, covered by your tests? And this is a well-known metric that we often use as, as kind of a goal to, to specify a goal of, of how many tests we should actually, we actually want to have in our app. Um, so should you have 100% test coverage? So should all of your code be covered by test cases? And while that sounds super cool and people often use that, that metric to compare their app with others, that's usually not what you should strive for. Here's actually a cool quote by Ken Beck that I really like regarding test coverage and that is, being proud of 100% test coverage is like being proud of reading every word in the newspaper. Some are more important than others. So what this quote basically says, and I fully agree with that, is that you should not strive for this 100% test coverage, that really everything is covered, because you will just spend tons of time to write test cases that actually um, test something that's really not really important, but you still spend a lot of time to write these tests. So how much test coverage should you then have, if not 100%? Well, I can't give you an exact number here because it uh, differs from project to project. I will still talk a little about um, about the, the factors that decide how much tests you should actually write or the factors that um, basically play a role with, with deciding that, with deciding how many test cases you write and how much test coverage you actually strive for. Number one here on this list is actually how forgivable are mistakes in your application. So there is definitely a difference if you if you just work on a simple to do app that's also not very complex, or if you if you are part of coding a nuclear reactor where a single mistake can can cost the life of a lot of people. Or another example, let's take a look at Google. If Google releases a new product, then they better make sure that works because they will actually target so many millions of people that a simple bug can actually cost them millions of dollars. So they better make sure that the, the, the feature that they actually bring out works. But if on the other hand, you just have an app that, that targets a very small user base, and if a bug also, maybe in the worst case, only leads to a crash and doesn't do anything worse than that, then that is definitely an argument to, to not strive for like 90, 100% test coverage. Number two on this list here of the factors that actually play a role when deciding how many tests you should write is the question, are you actually building an MVP, a minimum viable product? So in case you don't know this term, the purpose of an MVP is basically just to have an app with the bare minimum of features that are needed to have a usable app. So especially when it comes to startups, that is a very popular, popular term and thing that they just want to get out their MVP as quickly as possible to get that user feedback, that feedback by, by real people that use their app. And for that, they just need the, the bare minimum of features that people can actually use their app for something they can actually benefit from. And if you're working on such a project, maybe as a freelancer or a company, if you're working on this MVP product, then it definitely makes sense to um, think about if you really need, really need that many tests. I would always write test cases, don't get me wrong here, and especially for MVPs, I, I usually just focus on unit tests, so the tests that test your business logic in the end, 
and I write a very few integration or end-to-end -end tests, but I mostly focus on these unit tests because you can write these pretty quickly and they test a very big and an important portion of your code. And number three is a question that you also really need to think about and that is how much do you actually expect your code that you want to test to change in future because everybody who, who wrote test cases will know how big of a pain it can be to maintain that. So that means if you, if you know you're working on a feature that will probably change in future and that is more like um, trying something out, how that looks like maybe, then I wouldn't focus too much on writing test cases for that feature because uh, if that feature changes, then you also need to change all your test cases for that feature. So overall, I hope this video did not sound like it's it's unimportant to, to write test cases and that you should not do it. No, it's actually the, the opposite. So I really recommend to learn testing, to get into that topic, which is not an easy topic, but it will pay off long term so much. All I really want to say is that writing test cases is a trade off with time. And as soon as you develop an app that has some level of complexity, then you should always write test cases, no matter what kind of app that is. But all I'm really saying is there is some point in that, in that test coverage graph, you can say, at which it doesn't pay off too much in, in when it comes to writing even more tests. So of course you can say the more tests you have, the better it is, but most people forget about the, the time factor here. And that's really what I want to tell you. Um, time is important. You can also use time to develop features. So all in all, you really have to learn hitting that sweet spot when it comes to writing important tests versus uh, still considering time, the time it actually takes you to write these tests. I still think that uh, if, you, if you've heard this criteria that I explained in this video, that this actually helps you to reach to this point quicker because in the end it's you will only you will need experience to have a feeling for what that point is that point of writing the the optimal amount of test cases so in case you actually like this video and you want to learn more about these more advanced topics then you should definitely check out the link down below and subscribe to my free email newsletter where i will send you regular information about android kotlin and android architecture so just check it out, subscribe, it's totally free. And yeah, just enter your email and then you're in my list. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you back in the next video. Have an awesome day, bye bye.